<laughs> Look at that, it soaked the wall. That wall's like 25 feet away from me. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining us today on The King of Random. Recently, we got to show you our flamethrower, which shoots flame up to 50 feet. That was pretty amazing, but it's a fairly expensive project. What we're gonna do today is show you how to make a smaller version of a flamethrower that can be built for a lot cheaper. And just to give it an ironic twist, we're going to be building it out of a fire extinguisher. This is actually a pretty simple build. Here's the materials we'll be using to make it. A fire extinguisher, a Schrader valve, a hose clamp, a one quarter inch brass hose adapter, a wind resistant barbecue lighter, and two types of fuel we'll be trying out, some lamp oil and some lighter fluid. With all of our parts gathered, we're ready to start building our flamethrower. And the first step is to empty out the fire extinguisher of what's currently in it. This thing just pops right off. These chemical fire extinguishers are usually full of a yellowish powder and I don't want to spray it inside because it'll fill the room and get on everything. So I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to try and spray it into a plastic bag to contain the mess. Seems to be working all right. All right, that is empty. You can see our pressure meter is now showing that this is empty. Nothing left in it. Let's see what comes out into this plastic bag. I don't really want to breathe this in or anything. There you go, that's yellow powder. Now I know this cap is something that screws on. I'm just not sure how hard it is to get it off. Oh, there we go. Not that hard apparently. A Little bit of brute force. And this will just twist right off. There you go. We have the nozzle that controls the flow. We've got threads that attach to the bottle. And we have this pipe that will feed whatever's in the bottom of the tank up through into the nozzle. Before we proceed, let's empty this out and wash it a little bit so we have a clean tank to work with. Oh wow, there was a lot of powder still in that. Mmm, yellow dust. With the tank cleaned out, it's time to attach the tire valve. First, I'm going to screw this back on about as tightly as I can to figure out which direction it's going to point when I'm using it. All right, that's on there pretty tight, but I want to add my tire valve on the opposite side of where it's pointing. Now let's take this back off so it doesn't get in the way while we're drilling a hole into our tank. Since this is a round metal container, it's going to be pretty hard to drill right into the side, so I'm going to use a nail to give an indentation that will help guide the drill bit. All right, hopefully that little dent will make it easier for my drill bit to stay in place. We need a drill bit that is slightly smaller than the widest portion of the rubber on the valve. I'm using a one half inch drill bit. Now we need to get the tire valve out through the hole we just drilled. Since I can't reach my hand inside the bottle, I'm going to pass a string inside the hole and out the neck of the bottle tie that to the top of the tire valve and try and pull it through. Ah, there we go. The valve is now attached through the hole in place and hopefully that'll give us a nice tight seal that will hold against any pressure we put in. At this point, I want to test really quick if the whole setup is going to work, so I'm going to fill it about halfway with water, install the valve back on, fill it up with some pressure, and try spraying it to see if it's working. All right, that's installed. All right, that's just about 80 PSI right there. Let's try that out. All right, here goes. Oh, there you go, that is a nice spray. Oh, and with less pressure, it's a less nice spray. That seems to be working, so let's add on the other parts to turn this into a flamethrower. As you saw, the water is spraying out in kind of a cone shape, which I think is the intention with these extinguishers. They're supposed to put out fire over a larger area, so it's better if the powder sprays out in a sort of a cone. However, what we want is more like a squirt gun for the water or the fuel to spray out in a stream that will then light on fire instead of just going everywhere. That's the point of our little brass connection here. We're going to thread this into the nozzle to try and narrow down the stream of water so it doesn't spray out as much. 
Now I've seen these fire extinguishers where this nozzle is plastic and in that case we would probably be able to just drive our little brass fitting down into it using a pair of pliers. However this one's made of metal so first we're going to have to tap it to add some threads. Put a little bit of thread tape on our brass fitting. With the brass fitting attached, let's do one more test with water to see how the spray has changed. All right, let's see if our flow is any better now. Oh, that's way better. Got a lot more distance, it's a much tighter stream. That's what we're looking for right there. With the bike valve installed and the brass fitting on the nozzle, we have an excellent sprayer. Let's add a source of heat so that when we fill it with fuel and spray it, it'll turn into a flamethrower. I'm going to try to attach our wind-resistant barbecue lighter to the side of the tank so that the flame is in the path of the fuel. We'll use our hose clamp around the tank and the lighter and try and secure it in place. To make it easier to get the hose clamp in place without also trying to hold the lighter, I'm gonna use a little electrical tape to hold it in place just for a second while I clamp it down. At this point, our spray should go right through our flame, so if we use some flammable liquid, hopefully we'll get a flamethrower. We're going to try two different types of flammable liquid in our flamethrower. The first is lamp oil, and the second is lighter fluid. The lamp oil isn't quite as flammable as the lighter fluid, but it's a popular liquid for using in breathing fire. Since I think we're gonna have a similar spray from our flamethrower, I wanna try it out. I don't wanna try anything more flammable than these. I could put gasoline in here and it would almost certainly light on fire. Since we're using compressed air to power our flamethrower here, I don't wanna risk an explosion by mixing it with gasoline. Let's test out our miniature flamethrower. Some of you might recognize this as the same spot where we tested out our larger flamethrower. I thought it'd be a good idea to test out our mini one in the same spot because it's really fireproof. First, we'll try it with the lamp oil, which as I said, is the same stuff used for breathing fire most of the time. All right. Perfect. Now we add pressure. All right, just over 80 PSI. So I'll light the lighter, and then while the flame is going, I'll press the trigger and see what happens. Oh, a little. Hmm. Well, I think this type of flame doesn't have enough heat and fire coming off of it consistently to light the oil. So let's try one more try using lighter fluid and see if that's a little bit more flammable. Hopefully the lighter fluid is a little bit more flammable and will work with our lighter. So I tried firing it, I got a little bit of it to light and then it went out. I think that even though this is supposed to be a windproof lighter, just the gentle breeze out there is blowing it out. Watch this. The amount I'm blowing wouldn't even come close to putting out a birthday candle. This is kind of sad. Here goes. shooting right through the flame. Well, that was mediocre. Well, as you saw, using our lighter as a heat source didn't work very well. I think the pressure from the oil flying out of the fire extinguisher was enough to just blow out the flame. I have another method that I want to try that I think will hold up to the pressure of the oil a lot better than the lighter. Instead of the lighter, we're going to try using a lamp wick. I picked up a few of them at Hobby Lobby for just a couple bucks. To hold our wick, I have what's called a faucet supply tube. It's a small piece of chromed copper tubing, and since it's made of copper, it's very flexible. We're going to use that to attach to the front of our tank, add a wick in front of it, and light that on fire. This tube is a little bit too long, so let's use a hacksaw to cut it short. I'm going to cut this one so it's about seven inches long. Now I'm going to put the bottom two inches of this pipe in a vise and flatten them out. Clearly, if I leave the pipe straight, the flame is going to be in entirely the wrong place. But fortunately, since this is copper, it does bend very easily. We want the pipe straight in front of the nozzle, about an inch and a half in front of it, and maybe an inch below it. Now we'll use our hose clamp again to secure that in place. All right, that feels pretty secure, and just as a safety measure so I don't scratch myself on it, I'm going to bend the end of the hose clamp over 
into a bit of a loop. Now that we have our tube attached to the fire extinguisher, let's cut off about three inches of one of our wicks. Take one end of your wick and roll it up. You want to fit this rolled end into the copper pipe. Try to fit one and a half to two inches of the wick down inside the pipe, leaving at least an inch of it exposed. Now when we're ready to test our flamethrower, we'll soak the wick in either our oil or our lighter fluid, and that will be the source of ignition for the flamethrower. We now have our new wick attached to our fire extinguisher flamethrower, so let's test it out again. We had better results in our first test with the lighter fluid than with the lamp oil, so I think we're going to skip using the lamp oil and just go straight to the lighter fluid in this one. However, before I do that, there is another thing I want to test, and that's using coffee creamer. This is a corn syrup based powder that's actually pretty flammable when it's separated out. I'm going to see what happens if I put it into the fire extinguisher and see if the pressure is enough to drive the powder through the nozzle. Coffee creamer torch in three, two, one. Ha <laughs> ha! That's actually working pretty good. All right, it's already out of pressure, but that worked, that worked all right. When it was blowing full pressure, it did sort of seem to have so much pressure that the coffee creamer was flying past the flame so fast it couldn't heat up. But as the pressure dropped, and even if I just sort of halfway pressed the trigger to lower the pressure, it was lighting up pretty good. And I think this might be a good, relatively safe way to do this since it really doesn't have like flammable liquid getting everywhere. It's probably a little safer than lighter fluid. All right, we had sort of mixed results using the coffee creamer. Now let's move on to the lighter fluid and see if that works any better. All right. Three, two, one. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, it worked for a second. Then it worked for another second. That part in the middle, I'm not really sure what was going on there, but the beginning and end worked pretty good. I think what caused the gap in the middle is that there was too nice of a stream. When it was first starting, there was enough high pressure that it sort of aerosolized a little bit and that caught on fire. And then as the pressure got lower, it had just a nice little stream and that wasn't broken up enough for it to really light on fire. And then as the liquid got low, it started getting air and liquid into the tube again, and once again, it was aerosolized and it was able to light. All right, let's try this with lighter fluid again. See if we can get some good distance on it. Three, two, one. <laughs> Look at that, it soaked the wall. That wall's like 25 feet away from me. Oh, that was beautiful. There we go, all the pressure, almost all of the liquid gone. That was, the wall is still on fire. It's still got lighter fluid soaking on it. That's pretty great. That is how you want it to work. That was a great little just spurt of fire. That went 25, 30 feet away, stuck to the wall, burning the whole time. That was beautiful. It's on fire, put it out. <laughs> I caught the ceiling on fire. That made a really cool noise too. Woo! Well, there you have it. That is how you can make your very own flamethrower out of a fire extinguisher, which seems a little ironic, but it works really well. If you use the right fuel, this thing can shoot pretty good and it lights on fire beautifully. We tried using coffee creamer and got mixed results. I think the biggest problem is that we switched between using oil and lighter fluid and then the powdered coffee creamer, and I think it kind of got gummed up. So if you're gonna use coffee creamer, just use coffee creamer. Don't switch between the two unless you have a very good way to clean and dry it completely. Lighter fluid worked great as a fuel. This whole bottle cost about four bucks at Walmart, and when you only fill a fire extinguisher halfway, which I found works very well, you can get four or five different firings out of this thing. It's all pressured just by using a bike pump, and I got best results when I pumped it as high as 95 PSI. I got a really good distance, and I got a really good spray of the droplets that still traveled quite a ways. This thing fired almost as far as the full-size flamethrower. Once again, if you're going to build yourself a flamethrower, don't be stupid about it. Make sure you're wearing protective clothing. Don't point it at anything that's alive. Don't point it at anything that's gonna light on fire unless it's in a carefully controlled location. Always make sure you have the proper equipment to put out any fires that do start while you're using it. Even if those fires are exactly where you want them to be, you want to be sure you can put them out in a moment's notice if you need to. 
This has been a really fun project that's easy to do and doesn't take much time at all. This doesn't have quite the same flame output as the full-size flamethrower, but it's a lot easier and much cheaper to build. If you've got any great ideas of something that really needs to be shot at with a flamethrower, let us know down in the comments. Thanks for joining us for this project today, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. I did say it's used for breathing fire. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying these new videos with Nate as much as I am. He's got some phenomenal talent when it comes to building and crafting, and he really loves what he does. Give him some validation if you agree, and I'll see you in the next video.